In this video, we'll talk about the Pythagorean identities of extruded functions again, however, from a different point of view, now looking towards how can we use these identities to help us solve integrals that don't really start off involving trig functions, but by introducing a trig function, we can make it easier to solve. So this idea of using trig functions to solve integrals that don't normally involve trig is the idea of trigonometric substitution. It's the idea of, I want to substitute in a trig function, use the properties these trig functions have to cancel things out or make the integral simpler, and then work out the problem from there. So the important things here to remember are our Pythagorean identities, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is one, one plus tan squared is secant squared, and then secant squared minus one is tan squared. So what benefit do these have for us? Well, the important thing is if you look at, say, the way I've rewritten the one here as one minus sine squared equals cosine squared. The way you want to think about this is if I had square root of one minus sine squared of theta in my problem, this becomes a cosine of theta, which is a nice thing to handle, right? It's, there's no square root anymore. It's on its own. It's, it's more than happy wherever it is. And on top of that, if I look at the function that I put in here, if this were to be some sort of u substitution term, my du is a cosine of theta d theta, which is related to what comes out on the other side here. And the same goes for pretty much all these other functions here. If I had a square root of one plus tan squared, this becomes a secant theta. And if I have u being tangent, my du is secant squared, which interacts nicely with the secant term. And on the last one, if I have a secant squared minus one square root, that gives me a tangent. And the derivative of secant is secant tangent, so the tangents will play well nicely together. The secant will stay on its own, but the tangent will work well there as well. So the idea is, by introducing this in an appropriate way, I can get some way of getting rid of square root things like this. But at the same time, not make it too much more complicated of an integral, because the d term, the du term that I get from that, is accounted for by the square root. So it doesn't really explode the complexity of the integral if I set this up this way. So let's see an example of this worked out as sort of a motivation for why this might be helpful. So I want to solve the following integral here. Integral of 1 over 4 minus x squared all to the 5 halves power dx. At this point, we have no way to really handle this type of problem. There's no nice formula for that. We don't have a way to handle this. The way we're going to do it is by trig substitution. So as of now, I will just tell you what we're doing. And in future videos, we'll see how you can know to choose this later. Let's, what if I let x be 2 sine of theta? Well, then dx is going to be 2 cosine theta d theta. And I can make that substitution. If I do that, I get the following. 1 over 4 minus x squared for sine squared theta to the 5 halves times a 2 cosine theta d theta. And now I can simplify this out, right? In the denominator there, I have a 4 minus 4 sine squared. That's the same as a 4 cosine squared theta. And now I can pull out some factors of 4 or 2. The 4 come out of there is a 2 to the fifth, or a 32. I have a 2 on top. So this and this together give me a 1 over 16. Integral of, I have a cosine on top and a cosine to the fifth on the bottom. So I end up with a one over cosine to the fourth of theta d theta, one over 16 integral of secant to the fourth theta d theta. I see now an even power of secant. So this is an easy integral from our trig integral section last time. So I wanna convert two of those into powers of tangent, and then I want to use the rest as a du term. So I have one over 16 integral of secant squared is one plus tangent squared. I can make my substitution. I can then do the integral, and then I can sub back in for u, which was tangent. And I get that answer for this integral. Now, we're not quite done yet. And we'll go into more of this process in detail, detail later. But the point is, my original integral was in terms of x, so my answer needs to also be in terms of x. So I want to get this back to being in terms of x. How can we do that? We can do that by using a triangle. And what triangle do I want? I want a triangle that fits how x and theta are related, which is by this. So if x is 2 sine theta, then x over 2 is sine of theta, which means I want a triangle where sine of theta is x over 2. So I want a 2 on the hypotenuse, 
and an x on the opposite side, which means this side should be root 4 minus x squared. And now I know what tangent theta is. It's just x over root 4 minus x squared. So then my answer becomes 1 over 16 x over root 4 minus x squared plus 1 third x over root 4 minus x squared cubed plus c. So there's sort of how these trigonometric substitution problems work. The idea is I can use the properties of a trig function to get rid of a nasty square root in my problem. I can then solve the integral using trigonometric integral type problems, and then I can convert this back into x using a triangle. So we'll go through the whole process of how do you choose a substitution, how do you know what to do, and how do you convert back over the next couple of videos. But the main point here is here's how, here's the idea of how they work. You got a nasty integral, you plug in a trig function for your variable x, and it makes the whole thing work out a lot nicer when you try to solve out these integrals. This is the basic idea of trig substitution, and we'll see how to solve and how to pick these certain factors for the problems in future videos.